Hello everybody and welcome back to the next episode of the Women's Fishing Network uh, brought to you by Ghost to Eleven Media. Uh, I am your host again for today, Amanda Weeb. You can find me on Instagram at Wild Girls Alberta. And we are back. We're back at Wabuman Lake, which is approximately 40 minutes west of Edmonton in Alberta. I want to give a huge shout out to Lucky Bug Lures and Getting Hooked Lures for sponsoring today's episode. And yeah, just stick with it and stay tuned and hopefully we can hook into some big pike and walleye today. We're gonna go get the tent set up. So yeah, here we go. start that part again. Okay, so like I said, we're fishing at Wabaman Lake today. Um, it's about minus 22 right now with a little bit of a wind chill, but nothing too bad. Not quite like last time. Um, again, we're sitting in about 8 to 10 feet of water right now. Um, when I first get here and drill some holes to try out a spot, I like to send something down that makes a lot of noise and flash. So I'm going to start out with a Rapella slap rab. And yeah, I like to just drop it down and lift it up and down quickly a couple of times. I feel like it tends to lure any fish in the area in. Um, and then yeah, I'll swap to something a little bit more finesse if they're not interested in this particular lure. But let's see what we can shake up. So every once in a while I just pull up like really quickly on my rod. Um, and that's what kind of engages the rattle, rattle inside of the lure. And so it'll make a loud buzzing and almost like shockwave sound through the water. Um, and that seems to just really get them fired up. So yeah, I like to just, you know, kind of twitch, twitch, pause every couple of minutes. Um, and then when you see them down there, because you'll often see them when you're fishing in a tent, just light jiggles, you know, about an inch or two off the bottom and it draws them nuts. So when the walleye are being a little finicky, uh, something I like to do is I'll take my lure and kind of pound it off the bottom over and over again in the silt or in the mud. Um, tends to really get them going. And then hopefully you generate a bite. Just had a big guy swim through. The biggest one I've seen in a little while. So hopefully we can get him to come back. If all else fails, I'll sw switch to a jig and a minnow and try and finesse him. It's good that we're seeing them swim through anyways. Yep. Add some nibbles. Actually, up to that. Just a nibble. Oh, there's a bunch of them actually. Oh my god. So I got a whole bunch down in my hole right now, which is pretty exciting. Hopefully I can get one of them to bite it. He's biting. And there we go. And that's actually pretty 
decent height. Easy. On the Rapala. Look at that guy. Holy smokes. Okay, just one more sec. Can I have those flyers for one sec? And I'll just get my guy back down in the hole. And then I'll help you. Right. There he is. So, if I'm not getting bit within a couple of minutes of putting the lure down, I like to change my lure out. Um, I change my lure a lot when I'm fishing. Uh, I'm always looking for what they're biting and looking for. Um, so it's a good idea to just yeah change it up every once in a while when you're not having any action. And then who knows, you might put on the very thing that they're looking for. So I'm going to take the rattle bait off. I'm going to swap out for my favorite, the Lucky Bug Lures Zombie Max. And we're going to see if we can wrestle something up with that. Same kind of idea with this lure, um, you know, just jigging it intermittently and every couple of seconds giving it a good pull up. Um, it forces it to, you know, quickly swim through the water, which draws a lot of attention. Um, you know, looks like an injured bait fish, which is exactly what these hungry, lazy pike and walleye are looking for. So, same kind of thing, an inch or two off the bottom. Um, and then, yeah, just sharp tugs up every couple of minutes. And yeah, we'll see what happens. So the bite's pretty slow in this particular location right now. Um, we've had three and we've seen a couple, but nothing, you know, spectacular. So for myself, when I'm fishing anywhere, um, I usually will give a spot, you know, 20 minutes to a half an hour if not, I'm not getting anything, and then maybe 45 minutes to an hour if I'm getting intermittent bites. Um, and I will just move. Um, you know, it's a lot of work, but it typically pays off. If you're hanging out in a spot and you're not getting bites, there's not really a point in being there anyway. So it's a good idea to just keep moving around and try and find where the fish are. And honestly, I've had days where, you know, one spot change has, you know, turned into 10 or 15 fish, which is pretty incredible. In the nick of time, Oop, there's the second walleye of the day. That was on a minnow and a jig. Um, I actually do have a dead stick operating. It's uh, a really good idea to take advantage of all your lines. Check with your provincial regulations. It'll tell you how many lines you're allowed to have. In Alberta, you're allowed to have two. Nice close up of that guy's teeth. Um, you can't forget when you're ice fishing, a vital part of the whole fishing mission is to bring snacks. Um, you know, you're out here for long hours, so you get hungry, gals gotta eat. Mm -hmm. No, not yet. Zoom, maybe. So I'm gonna switch up techniques again. I'm gonna swap over to the Frostbite Dinner Bell. Uh, this is a jigging spoon. And yeah, we're going to give it a try and see if that's what they're after. So 
so the bike continues to be pretty slow um, so I'm going to change up my lure again I'm going to put on this chartreuse tube jig um, this has like a really neat floating action in the water um, I like to just bounce it around a lot and make it move and then after you know a couple of bounces let it settle and sit and a lot of the times the pike will eat it on the paws. So we're gonna tie that on and see what happens. Last one of the day. All right, everybody, that's gonna wrap it up for today. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video and that you learned something. I hope you feel inspired to get out and go catch some fish for yourself. And remember, if you or any of your female friends are interested in being a weekly host for Goes to 11 Net Women's Fishing Network, shoot us a message. We would absolutely love to have you. We're at three girls. We need four more. You know, get in on it. It's super fun. Uh, it's a really great project that I'm super excited about. Um, and, you know, remember when you're online to go to fishingandoutdoors.ca, pick up some great gear. And yeah, that's it for today, guys. So take care and tight lines and we'll see you next time.